Hey guys, I've gotten many requests for this time and time again, even though I've already posted multiple videos going over my button mashing, but despite never uploading anything, I've hit 300 subscribers. So to celebrate, I figured why not do something special for the nice folks at home. This is THE comprehensive button mashing guide. No longer do you have to watch 240p hand cam videos from 2009 to learn the secrets like I did. You're lucky enough to see an HD video made in the current decade. So let's get to it. I'll timestamp the different video sections in the description, and I'll put them on the screen right now. This first section is arguably the most important, so try not to skip around too much. I'm gonna guess that most people have already heard of this first technique. There isn't really a name for it, but it's usually referred to as the vibrating method. Now this is nowhere near the best method, but it's the easiest to use on a split second notice. In most competitive gaming scenarios, like fighting games or speedruns, you're doing a lot more inputs than just mashing. Everything is fast paced, so you need to be ready to mash with no pauses in your gameplay. The concept is simple as you can see, but how do you actually move your finger this fast? Well, you don't move your finger at all. You don't even move your hand, or your wrist either. All of the movement actually stems from the tricep, and your entire arm vibrates as you're mashing. First, you need to tense your tricep. And if you don't know which muscle that is, it's, uh, it's this thingy. Above the elbow, your arm should be completely stationary. While tensing your tricep, just move your arm up and down. Try to copy the vibrating movement, and you should be able to do it a little bit. Like with all things, you get better at it the more you practice, so just keep doing it. A good speed to strive for is like 10 hits per second. If you can already reach that, keep improving until you can do 12. At this speed, you're pretty much golden for most cases. Certain players require mashing even faster than this, such as Wind Waker speedrunners mashing to perform the zombie hover glitch. It takes about 8 hits per second to leave the ground, 11 per second to gain considerable height, and 15 per second for the maximum height gain. There are also Smash players like Mr. Concon who need to mash 14 hits per second to max out the distance of Luigi's Cyclone. Mashing is vital to both of these types of gameplay, so it's easy to see why mashing might be a useful skill to have. And here's a little bit of mashing history. Way back in the 80s, Toshiyuki Takahashi, perhaps better known as Takahashi Meijin, became one of the first video gamer celebrities, and it was because of his fast trigger finger speed. According to legend, he was capable of mashing 16 hits per second, and he gained this ability from playing shoot 'em ups such as Star Soldier and Star Force, where every button press means one more bullet you shoot at enemies. This is a classic case where mashing speed is vital to your gameplay. Takahashi was also the inventor of the turbo button on gaming controllers. He had originally thought of this idea to help himself avoid fatigue while demoing games and events. The turbo controller originally had an 8 hits per second setting, and later on a 16 hits per second setting was added in reference to Takahashi's own mashing speed. Hudson Soft also released a device to help gamers improve their mashing abilities, the Hudson Shooting Watch. There is also a nod to Takahashi in Mario Party 4. The mashing minigame domination has players mash the A button as fast as they can for 10 seconds. It has a maximum score of 160, so this is almost certainly a reference to the infamous 16 shot feed. Although once considered the fastest masher alive, there have since been many players across gaming communities who have proven their speed to match, if not surpass, Takahashi. So, why did I spend so much time going over this method if it's not even the best? Well, because this tricep flexing forearm vibrating motion is used in pretty much every other mashing technique. Moving on, we have another one a lot of you may have seen before, the sliding technique. As the name suggests, the method consists of sliding an object across the button. There are many little tweaks to this method, so I'll try and cover all the variations I know. The classic, as far as I'm aware, is holding a battery and sliding the smooth rounded edge across the button. I've heard of people using other objects like cigarette lighters and coins, but battery seems to come up the most. Obviously during a tournament or a speedrun, you can't just pull out a battery on a whim. So here's how to do it without any objects. The first method is using the actual tip of your fingernail to slide across the button. Each time you slide across, it counts as one A press. If you get the rhythm right, you're essentially mashing twice as fast as you normally would. The second method is the one I use, although it doesn't really work on most controllers. On the GameCube controller, luckily for us, the B, A, and X buttons are lined up perfectly. 
So I use the front flat edge of my fingernail and I rub it all the way across all three buttons. This gives you a smoother surface to mash across, so you get much better speeds doing it. It also doesn't hurt your fingernail as much. This other method actually uses two fingers. You put one on each side of the button, and then you mash back and forth. But not enough for your finger to go across it, but just barely enough for it to hit the edge on each side of the button. This works essentially the same as the other methods, although speeds are a little faster with this one. I've never gotten the hang of this, but if you do, you can go even faster. Now of course, because you can use two fingers to go on each side of the button, you could drag two fingernails across the top of the button as well. Although on most games this is actually too fast for the game to register, on a PC this would work. Although most people aren't playing with a GameCube controller on a PC, this isn't really that useful, but of course you can still try it if you want. There's tons of programs online to test your mashing speed. Even though the movement seems different, you still want to tense your tricep and vibrate your arm just like before, except for most of these sliding methods, you're not mashing up and down, but side to side across the button. Now, this next one is why most people ask for this video in the first place, the two thumbs method. I have no clue who to attribute this method to. I'm sure lots of players came up with this, probably before I even knew what video games were. Being one of the harder mashing techniques to grasp, it's the one I use the most, so hopefully I can explain it properly once and for all. This method shines brightest in the minigame world of video games. Whether it's one of the hundreds of track and field games, or any of Mario Party's 46 installments, top speed mashing is vital if you want to perform your best. The unmatched swiftness of this method completely makes up for the incredibly awkward hand position it forces you to use. Enough faffing about, let's show it off. Unfortunately, this method slightly favors right-handed players, but either way, if you practice, you'll get faster. With your left hand, tightly grip the controller from the top in a way that feels comfortable for you. No matter what, it's going to feel a little weird, but just try and get comfy. You want the controller to be as stable as possible, so that it doesn't move around while you're mashing with your right hand. While holding the controller this way, keep your left thumb hovering just above the button you want to mash. Now with your right hand, you want the right thumb also just above the A button, and you want to cup your other fingers under the controller. The back and forth movement of this method is all in your right hand. You move your hand down to hit the button with your right thumb, and then when you bring it back up, you hit the back of the controller with your other fingers, bumping the controller back up into your left thumb for an extra A press for each movement you do. So just to be extra clear, you do not move your left hand at all. You want it to be as stable as possible. You also don't want to change the shape of your right hand while mashing. You don't want a limp hand. You want it to be very tight, like making a claw shape with your hand. Mash down, right thumb presses A, mash up, left thumb presses A. That's the whole method. This method is good because it's essentially the smallest amount of movement you have to do to get two different presses each time. I've also seen lots of complaints that uh, people can't do this because their thumbs are too big. Uh, if you have that problem, you're not doing it right. Here's a clip of me mashing on a Wii remote on the smallest button I could think of that you would conceivably want to mash on. So if I can mash on this friggin' thing, you can definitely mash on this big ass button. Although this was just meant to be a tutorial, it kind of turned into a mashing technique showcase, so I figured why not include this last method. Earlier I put a little note hinting that the two thumb method isn't really unmatched. A few of you may have even noticed it. But there's one technique that completely blows everything else out of the water. Honestly, I don't even know if anyone else on the planet can do this, but the mashing master himself, Flyheck, does what he calls the eight finger technique. Here's a little speed comparison to keep you on track. If you do the vibrating method, a normal person will get between 8 and 12 presses, that's fine. If you get good at it, you can do anywhere between 12 and 16. It's very, very rare to go any faster, but here's a couple clips showing off people that can do it. With the sliding technique, you do anywhere between 18 to 24, although way more is possible depending on the game console setup. It, it really depends. You can get the same speeds with two thumbs, although maybe a bit lower, and now we're up to eight fingers. I'm not even going to tell you what the speed is. I'll let you watch the clip first, and you can just take a guess at how fast Flyhack really is. Yeah. 
don't feel bad if you couldn't count him yourself. He cycles through all 8 fingers 4 times per second. Flyhack manages a whopping 32 hits per second on a single button. As far as I'm aware, this is the fastest anyone has ever mashed on camera. Actually, some console games don't have a polling rate fast enough to even register those inputs. Like Mario Party, for instance. I'm going to use a game that runs at 60 frames per second for the purpose of this comparison. We're going to assume 60 frames per second also means 60 hertz polling, which is about 17 milliseconds poll speed. At 10 hits per second, you're pressing once every 6 frames. Once you reach 20 hits per second, for a game running at 60 frames per second, this is already one press every 3 frames, and that's only 2 frames between each one. If you press a button 2 frames in a row with no time in between them, then the game actually sees that input the same as pressing the button once and just holding it down for those 2 frames. So at 32 hits per second, Flyhack is actually mashing faster than Mario Party could even handle. I hope that puts into perspective just how ridiculous his speeds actually are. This became a bit of a shoutout, but definitely go check out his channel. He is truly insane at what he does. So this video went on a bit of a tangent, but I hope you found this extra stuff interesting. Originally, I had written a script for a super massive video, going over the entire evolution of mashing, but then I changed it to just a tutorial of the two thumbs method. Eventually, I ended up with this hybrid of the two, where I show off all the strats while throwing in some extra info. I hope you enjoyed this dive into a little area of gaming that most people don't think about very often, and I'm glad I could share this stuff with you all. Thanks for watching.